Right, so. Let's move on from the straight PWM. Where are we at? Uh, oh, it's uh, not this one. That one. So we've got. That is just a straight PWM circuit, of course. <coughs> And I did a board layout, retrospectively of course, uh, to show how it's worked. So what we need to do is move on to the, the uh, split rail one. So I've done a low side test there. So that means that the motor itself is being switched down to the uh, minus 12 volt rail here. So it's across ground to minus 12 volts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> uh, yep. Um, just, uh, oh, it's easy for to say. Mm -hmm. Now, I had to make some alterations because originally, I think I took the original circuit. This original circuit, um, and I had obviously because I'm actually stepping it across a power supply rail. I put in um, instead of this connecting directly, sort of like to here, and then the current down here or something. How did it work? Oh yeah, that one was in there. So Q1 and Q4, right? Originally in the PWM circuit, they had the same function, but this is across the ground. And this one here is across the 12 volt, the positive rail. And so we've got a transistor here to conduct between the two, right? So Q4 is going to have the same, Q4 is going to have the same function as Q1. When you say Q4 and Q1. Yeah. <coughs> now, in the original circuit, I put in a 1K there and an 100 ohm there. The problem is, is that that is actually across 24 volts because this is the plus 12 volt rail and that's the nine minus 12 volt rail. So you've got 24 volts across. And that 1K was getting a bit hot <laughs> because you're, um, you're putting quite a bit through it. I think it's more than the quarter watt rating that it's at. I can't remember what it is. It's somewhere like a watt or something. And so it's getting hot. And also, that meant that this, this was then having a serious amount of current going down here, which we didn't like. And so what I did is I multiplied both of those by 10. So that's a 10K and that's a 1K. That's here. 10K and a 1K. And that's fine. And I checked to make sure that we're getting an adequate switching voltage, which we are. I think without the transistor in there, it's somewhere up to 2 volts. So that's fine. And then Q4 can now work properly. But also... I haven't put it in this circuit, I don't think. Yeah, you see here, this is a 10K and this is a 1K. Those are the two resistors. And uh, in the layout, there, that's the 1K and that's the 10K, R7 and R6. 7 and R6. And then I've also have I adjusted these. Let's look at Q2. Q2's got a 100 and a 470 in this circuit. But I think I'm, I actually changed it, did I? Um, yeah, so that's a 100 and a 4. No, it's still got a 100 and a 470. Um, but what I also did, in the circuit here, we've got a 1K providing the switch on current, right, for the bases of the emitter follower pair, the current amplifier. Right, and I actually changed that because that was giving us about somewhere four or five microseconds. And so I've changed that now, and it's now a, in here, it's now a 220 instead. So that gives us more current, and then that makes it so that it's actually um, similar. And something else that I did, which is actually, uh, if you excuse me, let's put this stand. <clears throat> Something else that I did, which is not really part of the uh, circuit, but also I put a capacitor in across the low side supply because when you actually turn it up full, the motor draws too much current and a surge from this power pack. So I put a capacitor in there just to give it that extra bit, and that works. Now, if I turn this down, you can see it's spinning. If I turn it down. There we go. 
you see. And uh, so what we're seeing here, this is the, um, one sec. So, yeah. So when it goes low, obviously this is pulling it down to the uh, negative 12 volt rail. So pulling it down low is turning it off. I guess, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Sorry, no, switching it high, that's turning it on. Pulling it down low is turning it off. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what's happening here is it's just drawing up a little bit too much current. And so what you have to do is let that capacitor charge from the power pack. And then I can then go up to... But anyway, what I'm trying to show you here is that this, this is the switch on of the IGBT and this is the switch off. Uh -huh. <coughs> if I actually, oops, oh I did it then, that's interesting. So if I do it so I can stretch it out a bit so you can see better. Now, stop it now. Now obviously it's noise from the sampling noise of the scope itself, but if you ignore the sampling noise you can see that that down, right, now the scale that we're on is one microsecond and that is actually about half a microsecond there, okay, uh, oops, now if I change the trigger, and, uh, yeah, no, didn't want that, trigger, the other way, so if I change the trigger and then I'll just put it onto the higher power, see if we can bring that in. Here we go. So we've got the same thing. Hey, there we go. So you can see how it steps, right? Now we're on one millisecond again. Um, <coughs> there we go. Right, and it's actually taking two milliseconds to charge. Uh, sorry, microseconds. Is that right? Yeah, microseconds. Two microseconds to charge. One to about halfway. And I think this flat is actually when it turns on. Right. So it's two microseconds to charge and one microsecond, half a microsecond to discharge. So that's fine and we're in the right sort of range. scope itself has got a sampling problem, that's why it's giving that funny noise issue. Yeah. Just give it a second or two for the capacitor to charge. No, no, didn't work. There we go. So what's happened there? is what um, what's happened there is it's actually full speed now and the voltage across it is the full 12 volts you see and the reason why that's good is from the software point of view i want to see how the temp works and so now you can see it's at about 60 degrees but it actually doesn't get to the point where it triggers the uh, thermal cutout because the switching speed is now high and so you can see there 61 and it does rise, but it just doesn't rise that much. It, I think it thermal trips at 80. And it basically never gets there now. You see. And the thermal trip basically just basically shuts the circuit down. So that it doesn't conduct anything. Yeah. So that's working fine. Uh-huh. And that's using that layout, but I've got to adjust this R9 which is R9 this one which is now a 220 so I've got to put the touch but otherwise that's the same yeah and it works with a working grip this is one that I dug out of a Prius <laughs> obviously it doesn't 450 but it's got a uh, basically 3.3 millifarad so it's not bad and at least it gives it the ability